Hi everyone. So sa video na ito, uh, ituturo ko sa inyo kung paano mag-construct ng frequency distribution table. So ang frequency distribution table ay isa ito sa mga topics sa uh, statistics wherein ito po ay napaka-importante lalo na sa research or thesis and uh, sa statistical reports natin. Ano? So paano nga ba mag-construct ng frequency distribution table? So bali sa video na ito, Tuturo ko sa inyo step by step kung paano mag-construct ng tinatawag na frequency distribution table. So let us start. So we have uh, seven steps on how to construct a frequency distribution table. So maaring sa ibang reference, uh, konti lang na step. So bali dito, seven steps ang ipapakita natin. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, This is a step by step. Sa mga steps na ito, mas nagiging madali at mas malinaw kung paano mag-construct ng frequency distribution. So our first step is to determine an adequate number of classes. So when we say classes, that is referring to the number of intervals. And we have uh, suggestions here or recommendations na talagang importante sa pagpili ng number of classes or intervals. So, the number of classes uh, should not be too many or not too few. Okay? So, hindi naman masyadong uh, konti, hindi naman masyadong marami. And usually, the number of classes or the number of intervals is between 5 and 20. Okay? So, the class intervals should be non-overlapping. So, sa intervals natin, kailangan hindi siya nag-overlap. So, hindi pwedeng equal yung uh, uh, upper class limit ng first interval and then sa next interval natin, equal doon sa uh, lower limit. So, mamaya may kita natin yan kung paano. Okay, second step natin, determine the range. And when we say range, that is simply the highest value minus the lowest value. Or, the highest score subtracted to or subtracted by the lowest score. Okay? And third step is to calculate the approximate class size. So, yung class size naman natin, ito yung uh, size ng ating intervals. Ano? So, for example, meron tayong 4 to 6 na interval. So, we have 3 as the class size. Okay? Kasi... 3 yung scores na included sa interval na 4 to 6. So, we have 4, 5, and 6. So, we have 3 scores na nakapaloob or included doon sa interval na yun. So, that is the class size. And then, next step, uh, yung class size pala natin, ito, can be computed using this formula. So, you have to divide the range by the number of intervals. And then, next step, after mo compute yung uh, quotient niyan, of course, ang makukuha natin dyan, usually, ay decimal. So, kaya yung first step natin, determine the class size by rounding off C prime, C prime is this one, to a number that is easy to work with. And, here is a recommendation. So, we recommend class sizes of multiples of 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. Okay? Sa iba nga, mas maganda daw add yung number of class size. So, list the required number of class intervals. So, after natin makuha yung class size, ready na tayo makapaglista ng mga intervals natin. So, meron din tayo ditong suggestions or recommendations na makakatulong sa uh, pag, ano, paglista ng required number of class intervals. So, we need to start with the lower class limit of the lowest class interval. Okay? Of course, that is uh, basic or that is kailangan talaga yan. So, we start with the lower class limit of the lower class or the lowest class interval. Okay? So, pero maaari din naman yung highest uh, class interval lang muna. Pero usually, ang ginagawa ko is we start with the lower class limit. Uh, of the lowest class interval. Anyways, its value 
should be less or equal to the minimum value of the data set. After mo ma uh, nag start ka na sa lower class limit ng lowest class interval, o anong consideration yan? Para ma identify mo kung ano yung uh, lower uh, class limit ng lowest class interval. So usually, we start with the or the value should be less or equal to the minimum value of the data set. So for example, ang lowest score mo is 4. Usually, our first class interval is nag start sa 4. Okay? Or pwede than 3. So yan yung sinasabi dito. Less or equal to the minimum value of the data set. And then next, add the class size to the lower class limit to get the next lower uh, class limit. So later on, ma maintindihan din natin yan. Ano? Doon sa example natin later on. The last class interval should include the maximum value. So of course, yung uh, last class interval natin, or that is the highest class interval, kailangan included doon yung highest score natin or the maximum value. Then, sixth step, tally the frequency for each class interval. And then, seventh step, sum the frequency column and check against the total number of observations. So, clear na ba sa step natin? Sa seven steps natin? So, mas maintindihan pa natin yan uh, sa example natin. So, meron tayo dito ng example. The following data array presents the scores of 40 students in a 25 item quiz in statistics. So construct a frequency distribution for the data using seven class intervals. Okay? Based on this problem, we have a total of 40 students and we have to construct a frequency distribution table using seven class intervals. So, bali actually, yung step one natin, okay na. Ano nga yung step one natin? Step 1 is to determine the adequate number of classes or intervals. So, okay na tayo sa step 1. Okay? Okay. So, here is the solution. So, here, based on the problem, based on the problem, we have uh, k equal to 7. Ano? And then, next step, kung naalala nyo, ano ang next step natin? So, next step is to compute for the range. Correct? Correct? Oh. Compute for the range. Range natin is highest value minus lowest value. So, kailangan natin mahanap yung highest value or highest score and then lowest score. So, ano ang highest score natin dito? So, ang highest score natin ay 23. And ang lowest score natin ay uh, 4, right? So, ang range natin ay 23 minus 4. That is 19. So, kapag nakuha na natin yung range, anong next step natin? Next, next step natin is to calculate the approximate class size. So, i-divide natin yung range by the number of classes. Paano ang class, uh, number of classes natin? 7. So, to get the C prime, uh, divide the range that is 19 and 7. So, 19 divided by 7, paano makukuha natin? 2.71. So, that is a decimal number. Kaya, ang next step natin is to round up. So, i-round up natin ito into the who, uh, nearest whole number. So, kapag ni-round up natin, ang sagot ay 3. So, we have a class size of 3. Next step natin, fifth step, list the required number of class intervals. So, anong sabi dyan? Usually, we start with the uh, minimum value or the lowest score. Ano? So, Kaya, ang lowest score natin ay 4. So, anong class size natin? Ang class size natin ay 3. So, we count 3. Ano? H hindi 4 plus 3, ha? No, not 4 plus 3. So, we start with 4. 4, 5, and 6. So, that is 3. 3 scores included doon sa interval natin. So, 4 to 6. Yan. Anong sabi dito? Next step. Add the class size to the lower class limit to get the next lower class limit. So, pag sinabing lower class limit, ito yung sinatawag na lower class limit or lower limit, ano? Yung 4. So, kailangan lang natin mag-add ng 3. So, 4 plus 3, 7. Ganun din sa upper class limit. 6 plus 3, 9. 9 plus 3, 12. 
7 plus 3, 10. Kaya yung third interval natin, 10 to 12. 10 plus 3, 13. 12 plus 3, 15. Okay? And then, yung last interval natin is 22 to 24. Now, uh, anjan ba yung ano natin, highest score? The highest score is 23. So, 23 is included in this interval. So, ibig sabihin, okay yung ating. And ilan yung number of intervals natin? 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then, masi doon, non-overlapping daw, dapat yung ating class intervals. So, pag sinabing non-overlapping, itong 6, dito, as the upper limit, kailangan hindi 6 yung magiging next lower limit natin. So, kung 9 yan, dapat hindi 9 dito. 12 yan, hindi 12 yan. So, magiging overlapping kung parehan ang 12 yan. Okay, clear na ba? Next step natin is to tally the frequency. So, dito na yung interesting part. We're in magkukrusada-krusada. Parang nagdi-divide ka ng ano, elementary <laughs> krusada. So, anyways, paano ba tayo magtatali? So, pwede kayong mag uh, column by column, pwede din row by row. Halimbawa, column by column tayo, 21. O, asaan si 21? Saan siya pasok na interval? So, asan si 21? Dito siya sa interval na ito. So, magtatali tayo dyan, 1. Okay? Next score, 18. O, saan pasok si 18? So, dito, sa interval na to. So, count tayo dyan. Then, next, uh, 11. So, saan pasok si 11? Si 11 ay pasok dito. So, count tayo dyan ng 1. Next, 15. So, saan pasok si 15? 15 ay pasok dito. So, and so on and so forth. So, itali nyo na. So, itali tayo, and then prosada-prosada, hanggang sa maubos natin yung score, column by column. So, we have 10 columns here. Ano? Kasi 40. 40 yung ano, students natin. Or respondents or sample. And then, afterwards, ano nang gagawin natin? Of course, we have to sum this frequency or tally. Ano? Yung tally, i-add natin. So, this is 8. This is 11. Kasi kursada. Dalawang kursada, tsaka isa. So, 11. So, ito, 5, 7, 4, uh, 3, and then 2. Next step is to remove the tally code. Bakit? Kasi presentable ang magiging uh, table mo kapag wala na yung tally code. So, kailangan pres presentable. The next step is to tally the, uh, remove the tally code and sum up the frequency. So, isum up natin ito. 8 plus 11, 19 plus 5. That is 24 plus 7, 31. So, plus 4, 35, plus 3, 38, plus 2, 40. So, this is equal to 40. And since uh, based on our problem, 40 students. So, ibig sabihin, tama yung ating uh, pagtan. So, that is the ano, steps uh, on how to construct a frequency distribution table. Sa next video natin, uh, ituturo ko din kung paano mag-construct ng frequency distribution table using an Excel. That is a very, very uh, shortcut ng pag-construct ng frequency distribution.